<laughs> Today, we are going to discuss the components of a behavioral learning process called operant conditioning. Before we can understand how operant conditioning works, we first need to understand how psychologists define learning and behaviorism. Learning is a systematic, relatively permanent change in behavior that occurs through experience. Behaviorism is a theory of learning that focuses on how observable behavior is influenced by environmental consequences. In other words, the results of an observable behavior produce changes in the probability of how likely one is to engage in that behavior in the future. This is what psychologists call operant conditioning. There are two components of operant conditioning, reinforcement and punishment. Reinforcement aims to increase the likelihood of a particular behavior by rewarding the desired behavior with something favorable. Punishment aims to decrease the likelihood of a particular behavior by disciplining the undesirable behavior with something unfavorable. Reinforcement and punishment can be classified as both positive or negative. A common misconception is that the negative aspect of reinforcement refers to something undesirable. This, however, is not the case. The positive and negative aspects of both reinforcement and punishment are actually mathematical in nature. So positive, or plus, is a consequence that aims to shape behavior by adding a stimulus following that behavior. Negative, or minus, is a consequence that aims to shape behavior by subtracting a stimulus following the behavior. With this in mind, positive reinforcement aims to increase the likelihood of a behavior by adding a favorable response following the desired behavior. For example, if your parents offered to give you a hundred dollars for every A you received in a class, they would be using positive reinforcement to increase the desired behavior of achieving A's in your class by adding the favorable stimulus of giving you one hundred dollars. Behavior can also be reinforced negatively. Again, the word negative is only mathematical in nature, so negative reinforcement aims to increase the likelihood of a desirable behavior by removing or subtracting an unfavorable stimulus. For example, let's say that a child has a list of 20 weekly chores to complete. In general, the child finds doing chores as being unfavorable. Her parents tell her that every time she achieves an A on her homework, one of her chores will be removed from the list. In this scenario, her parents are using negative reinforcement. They are increasing the likelihood that her daughter will achieve an A on her homework by removing or subtracting the unfavorable stimulus of doing chores. Even though the term has the word negative in it, we are still referring to a favorable outcome. So if reinforcement refers to favorable outcomes, then punishment refers to unfavorable outcomes. In positive punishment, we aim to decrease the likelihood of an undesirable behavior by following that behavior with the addition of an unfavorable favorable stimulus. Let's expand on the previous scenario by saying that if the child receives a grade lower than a C on her homework, her parents will add a chore to her weekly chore list. Here, the parents are using positive punishment by aiming to decrease the likelihood of the undesirable behavior of receiving bad grades by adding the unfavorable stimulus of additional chores. We can also decrease the likelihood of an undesirable behavior by following that behavior with the removal or subtraction of a favorable stimulus. In the previous example, if the child's parents 
would take away her phone in response to the undesirable behavior of receiving poor grades, this would be an example of negative punishment. The favorable stimulus of having her phone is taken away or subtracted in attempt to decrease the likelihood of her undesirable behavior of receiving poor grades. In general, punishment is an unfavorable outcome and reinforcement is a favorable outcome. The positive or negative aspect of the outcome refers to whether the outcome came from adding or subtracting a stimulus.